What is up, fellas? JPS delivers here. NCAA 08 Dynasty with Texas A&M. Shutout start right there by Florida's defense. They dominate in their season opener. I mean, made sense. Tim Tebow actually his first, I guess this is the year Tim Tebow has his first starting season. or start, uh, First season as a starter for the Florida Gators in the Swamp after Chris Leak left and uh, Tim Tebow was doing, uh, I guess, uh, place holding for kicks. Not only that, he was uh, also throwing those jump balls. Uh, pretty much the start of one of the best careers in college football history right there. But uh, it's before he goes pretty much uh, beast mode. The next season gets like 50-plus total touchdowns and just um, goes batshit. Terrible NFL quarterback, one of the best college talents to ever play, or at least uh, performers of all time. He was a treat to watch. He was a treat to watch. And speaking of also treats to watch, right outside linebacker number five, apparently of Missouri, player of the week in week one. And uh, we saw Nebraska's starting quarterback number three. But we're looking at Heisman hopefuls so far. It is pretty much the usual suspects of what you saw last week, except we do have an addition, wide receiver number 17 um, from USC. I don't remember him, but we got Colt Brennan, of course, Kyle Fromm, John David Booty, and, of course, at the top right now, easily the most talented running back in all of college, all of college football, Mr. Darren McFadden. But that man right there, only 82 overall, and he finds himself amongst, what, four other guys who are at the top of their games in college football at this point. But now, going to look at recruiting. So we got that win against Montana State. I mean, not a great competition, but again, we got we to gotta get the vocal Paul brothers who uh somehow they're raised in two different cities but we're gonna call them brothers defender i think one yeah the defensive tackle he's right at the bottom of that list but we're gonna just boost up all the way up as we're gonna get him and his strong safety brother mr william well no the other cool name was william parkett at d tackle and so their defensive line's doing pretty well right now uh you, know, you got a rookie, Von Miller. You got Michael Bennett, who's going to be here for the next season. Harrington's good, but he's a senior. He will be gone. Defensive tackle number 85. He's the beast of the team, um, especially just the class of the defensive line. He's the defensive captain, even though it does seem to be the best performing player on this defense, is left outside linebacker number 37. The dude is a beast. And it's helping this Texas A&M team, I mean, get the cupcake win against Montana State. But now getting Flor uh, Fresno State, a team that, you know, still a class ahead of Montana State. But most likely a class behind this Texas A&M team. Rainy weather. Makes sense. You're close enough to Houston in that area. Kind of a coastal plains type weather. 80 degrees, rain, wind will not be a factor in this game, though. Fresno State known. We're having a pretty good offense. They do play, what I believe it's the whack at this point. Playing against teams. I mean, if you're going to have to keep up with Colt Brennan and Hawaii's offense with Devon Bess at wide receiver. Remember him? I think he was like wide receiver number seven. Um, slot wide receiver. But uh, speaking of studs at quarterback, Steve McGee, great start to his junior redshirt season at quarterback. One of the bigger names in the history of Texas A&M at quarterback. Just because more so... The man was 3-1 and one against Texas, and when you're like 35-75 and 75 against a team and the man goes 3-1 and one against them, you're going to be remembered, especially when it's a Lone Star showdown between the two of y'all. But first snap on offense for Fresno State. Going to be an incomplete pass. Now second and 10, quarterback number 7. Going to get that completed. We saw with the front 7. The front 7 is very solid, and I know I say that. Well, the quarterback just gets obliterated. I don't know if it was I don't know if it was an outside linebacker blitz. It might have been. Nope. It was Mr. Matt Dodge. Wasn't nearly on the edge, but it was a linebacker blitz by Mr. Matt Dodge. And what a move by Mike Goodson. And also too, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but these alternate alternate home outfits, alternate home kits. If you're a FIFA and soccer fan, if you want to call it a kit is looking slick. I mean, this defense is looking good. Great start to the game so far. Mike Goodson's feeling it. And Steve McGee getting down the field with his speed. 
Not able to get, what, the additional 10 yards it looked like, but right here, Mike Goodson on the outside. Beautiful stiff arm on the outside. Going to get the first down for Texas A&M. Seven to zip still. Triple options not going to work well, and it's going to result in impact player number 11 against this Texas A&M defense. Not Mr. Michael Bennett on the defensive side for Texas A&M, but it will be Fresno State's right end getting that play done right there. But beautiful batted down ball. Looked like at first ground was just too big to cover, but he gets it done. That should have been picked off by free safety number 26, but it is what it is. Fourth down, pass out from Steve McGee to Martellus Bennett. First down and 10 now. Nice run by the J train. This offense, I mean, you got this running back J train. It's nearly impossible um, for the most part. I, again, these jinx, fellas. It's the jinx. It's the jinx. But I say that. He gets stopped well behind the line, but it's not right out or not right end number eleven. But no, Mr. Uh, left end number ninety nine huh, just immediately just fucks his team over. Texas A&M is going to keep the ball. It's going to be a fifteen yard penalty. But this offense, Mike Goodson, the change in pace, a guy that's going to be pretty much give you more and more speed on this offense in general, give you more ability to move the ball outside of the hashes, and. Uh, just at that point, you got J-Train. He's basically just like extremely athletic, huge, bigger than a lot of fullbacks at this time. Then right here, not another flag, though, but it was a great play by him on that one, fourth down. Now, nice pass right here by this quarterback. Fresno State has seemed like they've always had a good, solid quarterback and a solid passing attack. Um, you know, obviously you think of the Carr brothers. I don't know who this Dude is, I messed up right there on that one, on that. It was, an, honestly, it was a terrible route ran at the end, but he did have his man beat, and I should have done better about that. But holding on the play, though, on the incompletion, huge sack opportunity. Now third and 29. I would have gone for the interception in all honesty, but we're going to have to punt it away. Ball well within Texas A&M territory. First down, Fresno State. But for some reason, they try to go to something new when they're moving and marching down the field. And there's our man right there. Just his first tackle of the day. Leading tackler on this defense. Took him that long to get the tackles. I guess that's what happens when you're passing the ball decently well. And a beautiful interception by right outside linebacker number 28. I thought he was going to take it to the house. He's got 88, 89 speed. Just, I mean, that's Ernie Sims type shit in NCAA. And it's going to be first down, the ball going the other way after that pass right there. Beautiful, beautiful intuition to cut that pass off. But even if he's super fast for a linebacker, he's still a linebacker compared to these wide receivers on the other team. Gets chased down. Eight yards on the play by Mike Goodson. And then wide receiver number eight. Very quiet, I thought, in his first game against Montana State. Um, it seemed like. Not getting much done. A man who was getting things done. Wide receiver number nine. Slot wide receiver. Him and wide receiver number five. It seems like the way this offense is predicated. It's just more so on trying to set up a game through the running game. And then from there, maybe just running some play actions. And it seems like a lot of these routes are opening up for the slot wide receivers in general. Um, we do have good size in wide receiver number two. But wide receiver number eight, the most talented of our guys and speaking of talent I mean quarterback number seven hopefully he's feeling better sooner than later but he I mean he just got tattooed on that play and speaking of our slot wide receivers again it's just gradually moving the ball down the field Stephen McGee gonna hold on to that one after the fumble earlier on today then he's gonna try his best to get out of this but now it's not B.J. Simmons. Nothing's going to be made of it, but we do have one of the best kickers in the country. 14-0, to zero, make it 17-0. to zero. That looked like that could have gone for another 10, 15 yards. 30 seconds left now in the half, and it's going to be a fumble. Huge hit on the kickoff return. 17 to zip still, but it's going to be a sack on the play. Offensive line, I think, is just going to have to work on their uh, pass-blocking ability. Because, I mean, you're getting a lot done on the running game for the most part. You got J-Train. It doesn't even matter at this point if any of these guys are getting a 100-yard, like, milestone type stuff. Overall, I think this team has done pretty well running the ball, whether it be on plays like this. Little scampers, little scrambles right here by Stephen McGee. 
or you got a little bit of like small routes <clears throat> ran in the flats by Mike Goodson. But the first interception of the season by Mr. Stephen McGee. And it's going to be, I mean, not going to say costly, considering this game is just not all that close right now. 17 to zip, interception by cornerback number 22. But it would have been nice to take advantage of that fumble like that. And almost, almost with the interception right there. But Mike Goodson, halfback zone on the left side off the tackle. Going to get easily, easily 10-plus yards in the play. Steve McGee going to rev this one back, though. And it's going to be Mr. Fuck, who the fuck was number five? So I've been talking about this whole time, fellas, that number five is Nawachiku. That's not true. Pretty sure Nawachiku played a little bit after this wide receiver. I will have to look him up. Pretty sure he did not play with Steve McGee um, at this point, at least. But back to... The hard hits. That one, surprisingly enough, the game did not give us a highlight on that one. It is what it is, though. But speaking of highlights, huge, huge catch. I got a little too lackadaisical on the defense on that one and let that one up. But a sack right here, another sack. Number 92, Mr. Harrington. It's just not a good read by the offensive line on where to move to protect their quarterback. That should have been an interception, in my opinion, but not dealt with well by this linebacking crew, even though they have been nothing but solid this season, especially the stellar play by linebacker number 37. And it's going to be a touchdown reception right there by the tight end. Just no one there pretty much banking on the idea that, let's say you run play action, we're most likely going to get to you. Not true that time, though. One catch on the day is going to be four yards and touchdown. And then... It's going to be another one right there for 2.8 to 24 at this point. And then on this one right here, y'all know it's like, I'm just a firm believer you can't be trying to go for like, you know, the the short route, trying to like think that you could open up space in order to get up the field to make the first down. I like to get the route set up to where when the guy makes his catch, he's already past the line of scrimmage or, or already past the uh, first down line. On that one, the controller is just fucking sketching out on me lately. I ordered some so official Sony PS2s uh, controllers or DualShock 2s. Fucking t yeah, I'm not over here fucking buying uh, PS2 Slims and shit like that off of eBay. But bought a couple of the controllers. Hopefully that fixes the problem that I've been having with a little bit of this. But speaking of a problem, it's Stephen McGee. And that problem is for this Fresno State defense. Not able to stop the man for the most part throughout... I mean... Both in the air, he's able to scramble. I think it was easily the most yards he's had compared to the Montana State game, and he's going to set this up. When we talk about, like, I mean, that's the cool thing about comparing, like, different play styles. B.J. Simmons, just the speed is there. I probably would have, like, had some, like, probably would have most likely ran that ball in, but the speed is only, like, 80, 82 by Stephen McGee, which is still solid. Don't get me wrong at all whatsoever. But uh, it was nice to be able to roll out like that and get one of those like last-second Aaron Rodgers just dimes just straight in the end zone. Nice touchdown right there. I believe it's his sixth touchdown pass of the season by Stephen McGee. And then right here, first down after the pitch to Mr. Mike Goodson. And then we're going to run a beautiful, beautiful speed option. It's going to be Javorski Lane getting down the field. I mean, the man's acceleration is amazing. His top speed is not amazing either. But, do you want to deal with him when he's at his top speed? It might not be the fastest top speed or the most... <sighs> I just don't even know what the fuck to say. If it, you just don't want to deal with that size of a body at his own top speed. There's just a lot of momentum to begin with. I mean, I'd imagine he still has more momentum than fucking uh, Mike Goodson running down the field. And right here, this is some petty shit, but I don't care. I really don't care. Texas A&M, we're up big right now. But even then, I just didn't want to have this defense have these. These are fake points, fellas. This did not happen. That touchdown did not happen. I wasn't going to let it happen. I don't care if it was like Oklahoma against Texas A&M to where Franchoni and the boys went in there and lost 77-0. to No. I don't care. Bob Seuss would do that shit. Most likely not. But we got to go full psychopath when we're dealing with this shit, fellas. I'm not going to let that shit happen. The defense played way too well to have a junk touchdown like that get counted. 
Nice win, though. I believe 38 to 8 at the end, or 38 to 14. But as always, fellas, take it easy and a game in Miami soon.